we are we've earmarked um, the proceeds for 21 projects, oh. 15 of which are going to be uh, new uh, BPO office buildings, which we are planning to build in places like Pampanga, Bacolod, mm -hmm. uh, Davao. Uh, the objective of the group is to eventually put in you know, all the assets into Emory. Whoa. Uh, and, you know, or a significant uh, portion of it, right? And to our goal is to be the largest uh, office street in Southeast Asia. Hi everyone, we are in for a very special treat today. I know everyone is excited about the newest REIT listing in the stock exchange. We have the president of MREIT and the CEO of Alliance Global, Kevin Tan, joining us in the podcast. Kevin, thank you so much for your time and for giving your insights with us in this interview. Hi Marvin, thanks for having me in your show. REITs started out in the Philippines last year. Um, what pushed you guys to do it also right now, 2021, in the in the midst of the pandemic? Hmm. Well, um, you know, as you know, the this has been an eleven more than an eleven year journey for the country um, since the first REIT law was passed. But of course, um, certain policies had to change, um, and the tax regimes as well for the REIT, uh, for the first REITs to actually be launched. And uh, last year, uh, since last year till this year, you know, one REIT after the other has been launching no? uh, uh, in succession. Um, I think that um, we uh, see the market uh, still quite stable, uh, at least the capital markets. There's a lot of liquidity, um, interest rates are low. Um, and um, you know we're we're putting into a REIT a, a sector that's quite resilient, which is the BPO sector. Mm -hmm. um, effectively, that's what uh, what our REIT's all about. Um, so I think that uh, now is the best time, more best best time than ever, to do this um, IPO, and we're very excited about it. For those who want to dabble into it but don't know what REITs are. Uh, what's the best way for you to convey this to people? Ano ba talaga yung REITs? What, what, what okay. is it? Why is it an investment? Just try to imagine that you buy a property, you know? uh, whether it's a, a home or let's say an office. And the way you want to make money is you rent that property out and you uh, get rental income every uh, month or in every year. Uh, now, Try to imagine that in a scale of one building with, with, with tenants. No? Of course, not everybody has the money to buy an entire building, mm. right? So REITs, effectively, what they do is they take an entire building, they convert that onto small shares, in other words, fractional uh, shares, and, and then they sell it to to, 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 to you and me, you know? uh, people who have a few thousand pesos that you want to invest. Mm. Uh, uh, in the case of MREIT, okay, it's actually 10 of these buildings, mm. right? Uh, and these 10 buildings have already 85 uh, tenants in them, all paying rent. All They've been there for, for five to 10 years already. So effectively, you're buying shares of these 10 buildings, mm. right? So effectively, you are a landlord as well in your own capacity. So when you buy shares of these buildings, fractional ownership of these buildings, um, you make money two ways. Now, again, you make money from the rent. So every quarter, we give rent out to you. You receive a dividend or your share of the dividend. Number two is that as time goes by, of course, rent rent goes rent. The rent will increase. You know, um, situations uh, the situation economic situation improves. Um, the value of these buildings also so should also increase in time, and so you the, the the shares that you hold should also be increasing in value every year. 
right? So you make money from the rent, you make money from the capital gains of the asset value. If I were a person who has who has capital to invest, and since it's exposure into a mega world property, um, what would you say is its advantage as compared to oh I'll just buy a condo in in any of those mega world properties and then have it rented out and then get revenue from it versus buying uh, the REIT as well. And if you like, I'll make it even more interesting. Uh, buying Mega World stock mismo as well. So M REIT versus Mega World or buying a Mega World condo and having it rented out. You buy a condo to live in it, right? Mm. Uh, you have extra money, you buy a condo to rent it out. That's also great, in an, especially in a Mega World township. No? Uh, but effectively, the risk there is you have to manage it. You have to manage it. You have to... You have to rent it out, you have to find a client, you have to get a good rate, right? Um, as opposed to a REIT, a REIT is managed by an experienced um, property manager. There's a, You hire a property manager who is also um, managed by a, an independent board. Uh, there's also a fund manager. So it's very professionalized. You don't do anything about it. You just sit back uh, and you just receive your dividends. Um, that's effectively what it is. It's uh, you. If you have passive, it's a, it's 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 a, it's a passive income. If what's if that's what you how you want to how you would like to categorize it. No, uh, that's what a REIT is. Now, of course, when you look at stocks, no, Mega World stock included, um, the way you make your money there is usually through capital gains. No, so the stock appreciation. That's really where that's the play of 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 of. of of stocks, no, uh, and then of course you get dividends as well. Mega World stock also regularly gives dividends. Uh, if you have the liquidity, uh, I'd say get both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got it, got it. Um, I'll, I'll I'll say this, and and this is one one of the reasons why I'm a big believer of REITs is, um, normal normal Filipinos, as what we were talking about earlier, get to buy, uh, condos, properties, residential, but getting into REIT. Not a lot of pe- Filipinos can buy buildings. Not a lot of people can have exposure mm. to uh, office spaces. And this mm. is a really, really good way to be diversified into something that not everyone can buy. And not just that, uh, it's spread across in different locations like Emreet, you have in Eastwood, you have in McKinley Hill, and you have uh, in Iloilo, which your your property in Iloilo is uh, amazing. I, 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 you, you. You, it's something that like feeling mo nasa Metro Manila ka when you are in that you, when you're in that area. Uh, that being yeah, said, I want to transition into this. You have you have three building, you have three locations, 10 buildings in those three locations. Um what was the strategy on why you picked those uh locations? And mm-hmm. um I, I was I was I was asking this uh, offline no. Um bakit makinlihi lang walang Forbes Town or Uptown since they're also in the BGC area? We carefully selected these locations no. Um First, effectively, what we wanted to put in the REIT are, are, are properties that are within our township. So that's the first, that's, that's the context between, behind our thinking. Uh, it has to be in the township so that it can enjoy all the advantages of being in an integrated ecosystem. Because that's what a township is, right? Uh, you know, a township, uh, you know, the, our, our, our clients, they love locating in our townships specifically because the employees love being in the township you know you know bpo you know bpo companies they only have one consideration where they go it's where the employees are happy and in eastwood mckinley and even in lilo their employees live work play inside our township um you know a lot of them you know the quality of life is just different right you have you, 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 if you live in the, one of our condos, even with your friends, you know, you don't have to drive your, you don't have to drive, you don't have to commute. You can wake up one hour before your shift. Um, afterwards, you can have coffee, have a drink with your friends downstairs, you know, nothing to worry about. And, you know, and everything is within walking distance, you know. Uh, one of the things that we, we learned was that there is a new movement in Europe. No, sort of, sort of segue muna. There's a new movement in Europe called the 15-minute city mm. that they've started. They figured out during the pandemic where they they want to remaster plan cities like Paris, Barcelona, and you know they want everything that you need to be within 15-minute walking distance from where you live, including where you work. We it's that struck us. We said you know that's what we've been doing for the last 20 years uh, in our townships, right? 
uh, everything is literally within 15 minutes or less. And, and you name it. You, you got your you know, place of work, you know, you, where you live, where you go to church, uh, medical facilities, groceries, uh, restaurants, your salon, barbershops, you know, you name it, your banks. Everything is all within walking distance. And that is the concept of 15 minutes. Safe. Now, we have 26, 26 of these townships all over the country. Okay, in all shapes and sizes. Some are very like, like central business districts like Iloilo. Some are a little bit more tourism related, right? A little bit more like Boracay. But you know, these townships are all in different stages of development as well. We specifically chose townships that are relatively more mature already, that have a relative scale and have a good population. Okay. Because we feel that kind of a setup is makes the office buildings in that township more ripe for injection into the into the reef. You know? Um, you know, we wanted to, you know, we also wanted buildings that were relatively more mature, you know, so that they've already hit a certain escalation on the rent, uh, good tenancy. And again, you enjoy the full benefits of a township that is matured. And that's what Eastwood, uh, McKinley, and Iloilo is. They're relatively matured townships. There's, you know, in between these two townships, there are 300 to 400 shops, stores, there are malls, different malls. There are uh, financial institutions, schools, um, uh, you know, groceries, several groceries in them. Um, we even have a museum in Iloilo. We have hotels. So relatively built up na siya. Nandyan na siya. No? It's not one of those like uh, in the middle of nowhere it's just starting out. You, know? you, you don't get the full the benefit of that. This is all fully integrated, fully built up. Now, another consideration that we had also, of course, is we wanted to make sure that the REIT it, it considers the location, 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 right? That's what they always say. Location, location, location. So, if you look at the REIT, there's 10 assets. Eight of the 10 assets are in Metro Manila. Okay? And Metro Manila, let's face it, that continues, it's still the, the center of our economy, center of all growth for, for BPOs. It's still here. You know? This is still the, 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 the headquarters of all BPOs. Okay? So we wanted to make sure that we skew it more towards Metro Manila. Of course, we wanted to add a little bit of Iloilo because Iloilo is a great story. Um, it's one of our, you know, we, we, we came into Iloilo 10 years ago. And the economy was predominantly agriculture. Uh, today, BPO sector is one of the major drivers of their economy, and it's grow. And we're a market leader there as well. And the and the, this pandemic, the big all the demand was going to Iloilo. So that's why we added a little bit of that, just a little bit, but mostly it's Metro Manila. Half of our township, half of the assets are in McKinley Hill, and McKinley Hill is in Fort Bonifacio, right? I don't think any other REIT has this many assets in Fort Bonifacio. And let's face it, Fort Bonifacio right now commands the highest rent per square meter. And I think more than any other business district, that is really when you say the BPOs, KPOs, the knowledge process outsourcing, that's the first address of choice. Fort Bonifacio, Kindy Hill. We had to make sure that we had 50% of our assets are from there. Uh, which then again leads me to say that that's why I believe that this this is one of this REIT is quite superior in that sense now because when you want to look for a REIT when you want to invest in a REIT you always look at you know like like when you invest in a property that you will collect rent from you always look at the location right you always look at where it's where it is in this case it's not just the fact that the locations are superior but it's also located within very active ecosystems that by the way creates more premium gives more premium to these particular assets individually. While you were describing that, no, I, I think there's one added thing that's so amazing about townships that uh, a lot of people don't see. Um, the, the safety of living there, that you can walk yeah. at 11 p.m. With, with, yeah. without being fearful that, okay, I'm, I, I'm okay, I can just walk to, from my coffee shop to my, to my house. And I think that's the added benefit of a township system as well. You touched on a very important point. You know, the townships were originally conceived as uh, safe enclaves no it, precisely for that reason um you know you have people living by themselves women uh, as well and you know in this bpo sector it's a 24 by 7 type of uh, operations no? so you have a night shift right as well 
So you you needed a, an environment where it's completely safe. But in this case as well, one of the things that we learned even during the pandemic is that township living provides a different level of safety in that respect as well. Because the townships you know, were designed so that you can kind of be secluded from the rest of the city. You know, you have your own entrance, exit. You have your own security, surveillance, etc. You have your own road networks. You know, underground um, parking, etc. You know, passages, connectivity. But that also proved to be very um, relevant and important during a pandemic situation where you have to lock down and control uh, movement and mobility. Um, you know, we were able to monitor people, keep them safe. Uh, you know, and of course, the fact that you're you don't have to travel far to get your essentials uh, was an added benefit, definitely. You no, know? so that's why in our townships there was no major outbreaks. You no, know? uh, we were able to control it. Um, and for the BPO clients, they love being in a township during the pandemic because because their employees could just rent and and you know they don't have to commute when they shut when public transportation was shut down. It was an, it was so easy for them to operate. You know? And that's why we know now that the township living is now the new way of life. I think if you talk about Metro Manila or living in the city, let's go deeper on the details of this listing. Um, one of the first things that I normally ask as well, and one of the first things that I look at as an investor is, um, where where would the proceeds of the listing go? Uh, what would you do with the money raised? Uh, Mega World actually right now has uh, the large one of the largest land banks among all the developers. We have. Uh, more than 5,000 hectares of properties all over the Philippines. And that continues to grow. Uh, that continues to grow. Um, today, we have 26 townships. By end of the year, we'll probably be about 29 wow. townships. We're, we're probably going to introduce new two or three more townships, depending on the timetables. No? Our goal with the proceeds is to enable us to um, replicate our township model all over the country okay because we've seen the effect firsthand in certain areas like for example as i mentioned iloilo uh, when we entered that 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 uh that 10 years ago it was predominantly an agricultural economy um but they did have one thing that was very interesting they had a they were they had the largest number of graduates um in the visayas region um and that we saw that as an opportunity because you know for the bpo sector they love to be in a place like that where there's a lot of a large pool of talent um and we love to we like to think that because of our introduction of Iloilo business park and our you know because of the township that we created there that we've been able to help transform the economy a little bit of, of Iloilo uh, and now you know everywhere you go in the city there are uh, all these developments of bpo uh, buildings catering to BPOs. No? Uh, we want to do that, Sana, in other parts of the Philippines because we feel that that is the best way. First is, obviously, the pandemic has also taught us that Manila, Metro Manila is a bit too congested. It's too dense already. I mean, the population growth in the city or the migration to Metro Manila in the last 10 years is, you know, you know it's tremendous, no? Yeah. Um, mind-boggling man already, right? So it's time to decongest uh, NCR and try to spread opportunities, uh, inclusive opportunities all over the Philippines, you no, know, in key growth areas, um, and and create also economic opportunities uh, in these key uh, areas outside uh, Metro Manila, no? And that's what the proceeds. Uh, of MREITs effectively will do. It's to enable us to 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 embark on you know nation building effectively now by helping create economic growth in new areas all over the country. So we are we've earmarked um, the proceeds for 21 projects, oh. 15 of which are going to be. Uh, new uh, BPO office buildings, which we are planning to build in places like Pampanga, Bacolod, mm -hmm. uh, Davao, um, Cebu, um, uh, Iloilo. So, and then of course, part of the process also is you know we're very big in, with tourism. Uh, we, we are currently the largest hotel operator as well in the country. We have 
uh, combine our group, AGI group, which includes Mega World and Travelers. We have about 6,500 oh. hotel room keys all over the country. We believe that that's another sector that we should be promoting. Of course, now during the pandemic, it's unthinkable. But post-pandemic, I think there's going to be a huge rebound in tourism. And it's a, it's a low-hanging fruit for the Philippines to continue to expand that. So we are also uh, investing in tourism in different uh, tourism estates all over the country. We have a lot of natural resources here, beautiful beaches. We plan to deploy some of that there. And then, of course, we have also allocation just for general development. No, uh, to again to expand our reach and create more op economic opportunities uh, outside uh, NCR. Got it, got it. And you you mentioned a lot about BPOs, and as far as I know, Eastwood, Kinley Hill, and um, your properties in Iloilo are predominantly uh, filled with BPO companies. But a lot of people are asking: Do you have exposure into Pogo? Does any of those properties have? Uh, have any Pogo tenants as well? We have a very low exposure now to Pogo. Um, we're less than 5% for the whole group. Uh, that means for the whole our whole portfolio. Okay. For Emory, there is zero wow. Pogo exposure. Like zero. Um, um, and in fact, um, in those three townships, there are no Pogo um, uh, tenants as well. Not even in within the townships that I have uh, that, that that we are putting in Eastwood, McKinley Hill, and um, and uh, Iloilo uh, uh, Business Park. You mentioned about the the ten buildings. No, right after that, um, do you have plans to add to those buildings, or for quite some time we'll we'll just be using those ten buildings to generate um, the the rental revenue? Our total portfolio uh, today is, for our offices is one point four million square meters. And MREIT is only 16% of that portfolio, right? So, you know, we have a very long runway for growth still for this M for, for our MREIT. You know? uh, the objective of the group is to eventually put in, you know, all the assets into MREIT. Whoa. Uh, and you know, or a significant uh, portion of it, right? And to our goal is to be the largest uh, office street in Southeast Asia um, by floor area, you know? because the largest right now is around, you know, uh, I think around 500 to a million square meters. No, um, I think there are developers in Singapore that have a million square meters. Um, office spaces. Um, we are already at 1.4, so potentially we can reach that target. Now, Mega World as a company, we used to build 100,000 square meters every year. Um, of course, during the pandemic, we slowed that down a bit. But why, right after we launch MREIT, we're definitely going to go back again to doing 100,000 square meters of new office spaces uh, every year. Uh, so as we as we build uh, more new spaces, we also inject some. We also inject some mature spaces. So it's gonna be like an accretive cycle that only Mega World can actually do because we not only you know building office buildings is easy, you know, but having the land to build it on is the is the concern. You, know? you need to have the land. You need to have the townships. You have to have the population. Population, uh, you know, just to, you know, just to name a few. Uh, factors that you might you need, no. So, but since we have a vast land bank, we are able to do this accretive cycle. So, this REIT, if you're as per, uh, from that perspective, will continue to grow in size. So, from 225,000 square meters today, within the first year, can jump up immediately already to maybe uh, 300,000, maybe in the next year, 400,000, 500,000, and so on and so forth until we hit. Uh, I mean, the goal is really we want to be a million square meter uh, REIT uh, in the for in the in, in the next you know in in fact in the next five years to grow, um, and that will make this REIT uh, a sizable challenger in the in a regional perspective or regional context. And and that's what makes it interesting because from an investor standpoint, though, you're not just uh, banking on the appreciation of the price based on its current form and the 
dividends that you would get but m- merely acquiring more uh, into the REIT will make the REIT more more valuable and it, it will benefit investors like me uh, in, in the future also. Our contractual escalation rate is anywhere from 5% to 10% uh, among our 85 uh, tenants within this REIT. So, and that's stable. Uh, and, and that also provides you what we call organic growth. Right, so every year your dividend uh, actually increases as well because of the in- increase in the rental rates that happens on a contractual basis. Um, just to follow on on what you said, you no, know, um, about uh, raising rental rates, how, how how do you see that over the next um, one or two years? Right now that we're on a pandemic, um, has that been affected? Or since we're catering to the BPO market, it's it's virtually an unchanged of sorts. Yeah, you know, the Philippine office sector uh, actually has been, I think, the most resilient in the region. Mm. You know, other markets, uh, the office sector, you know, the because of the pandemic, office rents have dropped. You no, know? um, and they were not able to even. Uh, they, well, they, well, it's been rolled. The rents have been rolling back in certain countries and certain regions just near us. No? Philippines is the only region that actually still grew. And that's precisely because we are targeting mostly BPO clients. And, you know, the BPO industry, even at the height of the pandemic, uh, it, it was one of the very few industries in the Philippines that still uh, registered uh, positive growth. And it was the only industry that still, despite the challenges, continued to hire more people. Um, and that's just shows you the strength of this uh, industry, um, and that's why you know when you look at the office uh, rentals as well. Actually, we were able to maintain the rent. Uh, there was no discounting or rollback. In fact, we were even able to you know follow the the the, the rental um, the the rental escalation rates. No, of course, during the height of a pandemic, we. You know, we we gave deferments, no meaning you know you, you you pay the rent later on, but not necessarily discounting, just deferring lang. But but that's that's already done. Um, this year and next year, our outlook is very 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 optimistic for office because the U.S., which is the primary source of clients for our BPO uh, industry here in the Philippines, is already on an economic rebound, as you can see. You know? Sectors that were affected last year, like travel, airlines, those were all, you know, they're all put on hold. But this year in the U.S., that sec- those sectors have already rebounded. And as a result, there's there has been renewed interest again to take on more spaces, actually, from our portfolio. Um, and we expect that to happen, to continue, the momentum to continue all the way to next year and even the year after. Um Every time there is a big crisis or recession, um, and we've seen this in the past, the succeeding years um, are huge growth years for BPO sector. We've seen this in in 2001 uh, when the dot com crisis happened in the U.S. and 9/11 happened. You know, the following years, growth years for BPO. That was actually the start of the BPO sector in the Philippines, and then. You had also the subprime crisis, the U.S. 2008, uh, 2009. From 2010 onwards, you saw, saw tremendous growth years for for BPO sectors, and we expect the same to happen here uh, during this 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 latest one. No? Um, and of course, uh, you know, when when whenever uh, the U.S. is in recovery mode, they outsource quite a lot of jobs here to the Philippines, and and so and we're seeing that already as early as now. Got it, and it's it's nice to know, and and the numbers naman back it up talaga that after a crisis, after a recession, it's fo- it's followed by very very strong economic recovery. Our REIT is predominantly in Metro Manila, okay, and half of our REIT is in Port Bonifacio uh, area. Uh, that alone is a very superior proposition. Mm-hmm.